When you are immortal and also kept pretty much eternally in peak physical and mental condition as a result of being an Asgardian and having access to those magical golden apples from the Yggdrasil tree, it's easy to understand how there might end up being a lot of you. Welcome back nerd squad, there are tons of gods, goddesses, as well as everyday as guardians out there creating new life and very rarely dying off, unless there is some kind of apocalyptic Ragnarok around the corner, which doesn't happen every day. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the children to come from Asgard as we count down the top 10 children of Asgardians. Not all of these may remain children eternally or even for a short time, but all of these beings are born of Asgard in some magical or natural way. All right, now let's get counting. Number 10, Keep. In a strange way, Keep is a child of Asgardia, created by Amor the Enchantress using Donald Blake, but was also Enchantress's lover. So yeah, she was like his mother and his lover. Blech. Keep would do anything for Enchantress and loved her dearly and unconditionally. He was also strong enough to take on Thor in battle, and although he didn't win the day, he at least survived and held his own. Keep was a character created by Matt Friction and Pepe Larraz, who appeared in a few story arcs where we got to see him created by Enchantress and become her ally as she fought against Thor, using Donald Blake to torment him and also attempted to put Thor on trial. However, we haven't seen Keep for some time in the comics since. Probably because he was kind of weird, but also he was kind of cool, so I don't know. I don't know if anyone else remembers Keep. Number 9. Tess Black Tess Black is one of the daughters of Loki, whom he sired with a mortal human woman. However, we never learn of her mother's name. We just know that she is Loki's daughter and is living in New York when Morwen, a sorceress of chaos, takes hold of her, using her as a host body. When Morwen learns of Tess Black's origins, she says that this explains why her strength has been bolstered and improved, since Tess is technically a demigoddess. Although, while in her mortal form, we haven't seen her wield any of her powers generally known to belong to someone of such strength. Though, that could simply be because she's completely unaware that she's related to the Asgardian god of mischief. Spider-Man and Loki teamed up to take down Morwen, but following that, Loki made sure Tess had no memory of the experience or of her relation to him. So she's probably just wandering around right now as like a normal human. And before we move on to this next spot, just a reminder to give this video a thumbs up. It really does help us out here at the channel. And thank you to everyone who's already done that. Thank you. Number eight, Torin. Torin is the daughter of Sif and Thor in the animated universe of Earth 555326, belonging to Next Avengers Heroes of Tomorrow. Torin learned that Ultron had defeated the Avengers and ended up mostly being raised and trained by surviving member Tony Stark. When Tony was kidnapped, she helped to rescue him and also joined her fellow young Next Avengers team in an attempt to recruit the surviving Bruce Banner to their cause as Hulk. In the end, it was revealed her father had actually been with her all along in spirit as he was actually safe in Asgard and had left Torin alone on Earth merely to help his daughter learn humility, as his father Odin had done to him before her. Thor returned to her just as she needed him on the Bifrost Bridge and offered Torin a place in Asgard, where she would live as its rightful princess. But she decided nah, not to go with him, instead choosing to return to her fellow friends and heroes. Instead, Thor gifted her new Asgardian armor to take back with her. Number 7. Magni Magni comes to us from the alternate universe of Earth 3515 one that Thor realized he had to destroy because of how much he had royally messed it up. In this alternate future reality, Thor and Asgard ended up conquering Earth, facing off with Earth's mightiest heroes and winning against them. Magni was his son, born after this great victory. Magni's father is Thor and his mother is Amora the Enchantress. Magni ended up falling in love with a mortal woman and through this experience realized all the wrongdoings of his father in ruling Earth and ruling it pretty unjustly. He ended up allying with the exiled Lady Sif and together the two confronted the unworthy Thor about it. In the end, this confrontation and an unexpected attack made Thor realize the error of his ways and he undid the events that led to this future, erasing it and also erasing Magni, sadly. Bye. Number 6. Hela. Hela, like in Norse mythology, is believed to be the daughter of Loki, as well as in Marvel Comics. Although in the MCU, we see a different version of her in contrast to the main continuity of Earth 616, where in the MCU, she is instead presented as having an origins to be Thor's long lost sister, as opposed to his niece, which also makes her the sister, as opposed to the daughter of Loki. Hela was prophesied to be a great danger to Asgard, and as such, was made the ruler of Hel 
and the goddess of the dead. However, Odin wanted to maintain rule over the souls of Asgard and the souls of those who paid tribute to the Asgardian gods, worshipping them. This only made Hela vengeful towards her family and made her long for the souls of Asgard and especially Odin, and usually Thor. Everyone wants Thor's soul, it's just a, it's a hot commodity. Number 5. Vidar Vidar was the son of Odin and Grid, the storm giantess. Just because Odin later ended up with Frigga did not mean he didn't have children with other women. Back in the 90s when Marvel was trying to make Thor and everyone else for that matter look super edgy in comics, we learned of Vidar's fate. He ended up being banished soon after Odin married Frigga. Later on, following the events of Ragnarok, it was discovered that Vidar had perished during the fray. Vidar also at one point lost his love soul Vig while banished by Odin for being part giant, part as guardian. And yet, because he was neither, giants ended up attacking and killing his wife. Her fate he blamed on Odin, who cast him out and yet still kept mad Loki close. I gotta be honest, this seems pretty unfair, Odin. Why'd you do this? Also, just a quick apology for all of those names that I potentially said wrong. I'm trying here. <laughs> Number four, Sif. Lady Sif is not just of Asgard, she is also an Asgardian warrior goddess. She is known for being a strong and fearsome warrior and noble fighter alongside her beloved Thor. While they have had an on and off relationship for some time, it seems she is often tormented by Thor's brother Loki because of Thor's general undying love for Sif. Originally Sif had blonde hair, but Loki actually cut it all off to spite Thor, and then was made to give Sif back her hair again. However, instead of giving her gold golden hair, he had long black strands of night woven into hair for her. However, Thor loved her even more with dark hair, so the joke was on him. Loki has also possessed Sif's body before just to get back at Thor. Despite all of this torment, however, Sif still remains a fearsome warrior who rarely shies away from a fight or from conflict in general, even if it means pointing a sword at kid Loki. Number 3. Brunhilde Although we don't know specifically who Brunhilde's parents were, we do know that she is an Asgardian goddess and therefore a child of Asgard. She was chosen by Odin himself to become his Valkyrie and was given the responsibility of guiding and choosing the warriors who died in battle with honor to go up to Valhalla. She was in fact the leader of the Valkyroar, an entire group of warrior goddesses tasked with this important responsibility to lift up the fallen mortals who worshipped the Asgardian gods and were deemed worthy in death. It's also believed that Brunhilde was cast out to become a mortal woman for defying Odin and ended up as a lover to one of Thor's mortal reincarnations, Siegfried. Although neither she nor Thor remembers these events as Odin wiped their memories of them when he gave them a mortal life once more, following both their mortal deaths. She is currently believed dead after dying at the hands of Malekith during the War of the Realms event. Sad. Number 2. Loki Despite being born of the frost giants, Loki is still widely acknowledged as an Asgardian, having been adopted at a young age by Odin and Frigga. He was raised as one of their own, and although he has often felt like an outsider and been a thorn in their side in the side of his brother Thor, Loki is still considered very much an important member of the family. While he has tricked his family members on multiple occasions and put them in harm's way, he has also sought to help them too many times. We've also seen many different versions of Loki over the years, some who are kinder to his family members, while others that are more cruel. Him being such an ever changing character is also what makes him one of the most interesting Asgardians out there. Number 1. Thor. Although Thor is now largely recognized as being a man grown, he is also the son of Odin which makes him a child of Asgard, back when he was a child and even now. Thor is one of the mightiest Asgardians and also the one who has the closest connection to Midgard and Earth, despite his father's general lack of interest in that place. In fact, this tends to be a point of contention between the two, where Odin often wishes his son was less attached to humans and more interested in serving the interests of Asgard alone. When it comes to Asgardians, Thor is one of the most notable and easily recognized. There are so many awesome children of Asgard, I definitely did not have enough room to mention all of them in a top 10, but I hope you found this list a combination of insightful and celebrated, highlighting some children you know and love and some you have never even heard of before. Who are some of your favorite children of Asgard? Who would you like to see on a potential part 2 to this list? Let us know in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I'm your host Amanda McKnight, reminding you to stay nerdy YouTube.